All right, so it's the end of deer season here in North Carolina, and if you're anything like me, you are already on to the next season. And for us, that is turkey season. So uh, you can see I've got the same decoy here, but something a little bit different on this side. So I've actually added black flocking to the back of this more affordable Primo's decoy. I think this thing was only like $35, $36, and uh, just an awesome deal for the overall look and the profile of the decoy. Um, now I understand you do not need a decoy to kill a turkey, and I've killed many without a decoy, but I hunt a lot of the archery zone because the gun zones for game lands in North Carolina, a lot of them are permit only. So if you don't get drawn for a permit, you have to hunt the archery zones. And so it's a lot easier to get those birds in range if you have a decoy and to keep their attention off of you. So uh, adding this black flocking is, a, is kind of a new trend in decoys. I know the Dave Smith does it and the AVNX decoys do it and probably some other ones like the Higdon but uh, it really adds some realism to the decoy. It looks like that tom is puffed up at a hen or something like that. And uh, in my opinion, out in a field setting, it's a lot easier for a bird to see this super dark black right here more than it is even the red or white head. So I'm gonna show you all the way that I do it. It might not be the right way to do it, but I'm gonna show you all how y'all can flock the back of this turkey decoy and even use it for other decoys like crows or geese or anything like that. So it's a little windy out here and you want to make sure you save your wasted flock. So we're gonna do it inside where the wind's not gonna blow it all around. It's gonna be really important that you do this inside, mostly because you wanna be able to catch that extra flocking that's going to get fall off of the decoy as you um, shoot it on there. And if you do it outside, that breeze is really gonna blow that stuff away and you won't be able to catch that, um, that extra flocking so that you can use it later on down the line. Now what I'm using is a, uh, it was a kit from Flock It. <laughs> and that's a uh, funny name, but it's a suede tex. And uh, this is the undercoat. So I'm no expert at this, but basically what you have to do is paint this undercoat adhesive, which is essentially a paint, a black paint slash glue, and you're gonna paint that in the exact location that you want that flock to stick. So as you paint it on there with a paintbrush, you're then going to quickly load up your flocking um, canister right here. Now, this, I'm not sure how you're supposed to use it. I haven't seen a video. I don't know if you shake it on there, but what I've been doing is kind of shotgun, like pumping it on there, and it actually shoots a nice even coat to the turkey there. But let's just go ahead and start getting painting. Now I'm being pretty liberal with this stuff. I'm not babying it at all. I'm going ahead and putting a pretty good thick coat down because you're gonna want that for that flocking to stick and not come up. All right, so as you can see, I've got a pretty good shiny coat going on right there. So what I'm gonna do now is quickly go ahead and put it into the bin and load my flocking canister and go ahead and go. I'm gonna quickly though, put an extra coating on there just so it sticks. It's a little bit cold outside, so I really wanna make sure that this paint is still nice and sticky. And we got plenty of it. See, it's a little bit shiny right there on the edges, so definitely gonna have to hit that a little bit too. Oh. All right, so uh, this is kind of what you're left with. Um, I don't see any um, 
shiny spots anymore. I put a really thick coat on here. Um, like I said, I see a lot of guys who put double coats who will go ahead and paint over top of this flocking again. But uh, I think I'm just gonna see how this one does. The other one turned out pretty good. And uh, you can really see why you need to have one of these. I know I got a bunch on the garage floor in here, but this is gonna save a lot of money for you in case you wanna do multiple decoys. But uh, we're just gonna let this thing sit up and uh, dry out and see how it looks. Well, as you can see, this thing turned out uh, pretty awesome. Um, you can see that I, I did have some run out on, on some of these spots, but it really doesn't matter. As long as you can get kind of that really matte black, um, it'll get the job done. But uh, just something super simple you can do to add a little realism to your decoy, or if you just get bored one day, you can do this. It did not take me long to do it all. The longest part was letting it dry. Uh, I really Another great thing about this decoy in particular is um, although it's super cheap, it's awesome because it has a little movement to it. Now, sometimes I'll even attach a little jerk rig and pull it with a hand down here. It looks like a gobbler is situating himself on top of it. And um, I think it really helps to take your attention off yourself and that gobbler will pay attention to that turkey more than he will you. But uh, easy improvement that you can do to just about any decoy, whether it be crows, geese, or even turkeys.